Okay, and uh, as I said uh, during the agenda, I want to talk a little bit about the configuration utility in, uh, and introduce that tool to you. Uh, so essentially, we created uh, like some Python Python script uh, for um, so maybe other way. So every company, like every BIOS company, got some configuration utility. We thought that we don't need one and like we somehow will deliver binaries and that, that will be completely fine. But suddenly it happened that, for example, s s some uh, customers want to change logo and want to change logo like in this bina binaries for have want to this logo and that binary is one different logo and uh, and doing that uh, but in a way that rebuilding the, the binaries or, or like uh, doing some uh, CBFS uh, util uh, operations or some like complex shell scripting uh, stuff uh, is not the, their thing. They would like to have simple utility when they provide logo and magic happen. Also, uh, we realized that uh, it may be useful uh, to put some unique IDs uh, or, or some serial numbers. And some people may want to customize that because like in core boot, I guess this is a configuration option, build time configuration option. And, and maybe that's not very useful for those who uh, get the binaries from us. And that's how we ended up in uh, with the Shara configuration utility. It's, it's Python tool on uh, Apache 2.0 license. Uh, you can get it on the, on the GitHub. It's very simple right now, uh, but I already have some vision for it and would like to share it with you and talk a little bit about the features which are already implemented. Um, yeah, so as documentation say, uh, the shadow configuration utility can be run in two modes, standalone and conta container. I tried this only in container because like, I, I, I guess like using this as a, installing this as a Python and like resolving all that stuff is not my thing. So I essentially tried the uh, container version. It works fine. Um, so at least basic verification was done. So in case of uh, vision for this tool, I, I, I have like a couple points here. Uh, first of all, uh, maybe this is not the most important for the uh, individual contributors community, but it's very important for uh, our customers and for everyone who wants to do the uh, scale deployment or mass deployment uh, with some provisioning of features um, in the binaries, um, especially when the number of features and the number of configuration possibilities will grow. Um, so first of all, like I, I see that this tool at some point could contain some custom configuration profiles. So let's say someone selling, uh, I don't know, uh, for like some, some, someone selling laptops for, I don't know, three big customers and every of these customers want different logo. So yeah, of course, like profile for company A, profile for company B, pro profile for company C with different logo. Then uh, I guess some uh, companies would like to have uh, some defaults, uh, let's say same defaults, uh, more same defaults or more feature uh, complete uh, defaults, uh, more secure defaults or more like a relaxed one. Um, so that also could be uh, part of the configuration profile and could be part of the things that uh, the shadow configuration utility checks and make sure um, it is provisioned correctly uh, at the pre-deployment time. Yeah. Then uh, we, we think it's also can uh, simplify data transition. So sometimes we want to deploy the shadow on the platform which already got proprietary bios but but we don't want to lose the serial number don't want to use some uuid uh, maybe based on those numbers something else uh, relies like excuse me like some license um or we would like just to preserve those those things for future use and i guess uh this you could help in transitioning those information to to the shadow firmware um, and we don't have to ask our users to recompile binary to, to have correct serial number or to have some correct UUID. Same thing about the logo, of course. If our users want to change logo, uh, they should have uh, 
they, they should have ability for doing that, and that should be unified across various Dasharo uh, releases. Um, I also think that in, in future, uh, Dasharo configuration utility could be used for enabling Dasharo enterprise features. So, for example, we could imagine that uh, Dasharo configuration utility kind of modifies the uh, Dasharo binary. So, this binary has ability to provision uh, Intel boot guard uh, on the next, on the first boot. Like, th there is there is Intel boot guard feature which uh, gives ability to do that. So, essentially, at first boot. Uh, if binary is correctly configured, uh, the keys are fused, and of course, uh, I guess our users uh, and our customers would like to fuse to their keys, or maybe they would like to fuse with our keys. Uh, so I guess various options could, could be available for uh, for our customers through this tool. Um, and I think also some um, enterprise security features, like some advanced stuff related to, I don't know, DRTM maybe, uh, maybe some advanced stuff to secure boot. Uh, maybe some um, some some stuff related to uh, encryption. Maybe some stuff related to TPM could be configured as a default, uh, or or maybe change those defaults um, in in this uh, in this tool. Then I think uh, there is some analysis, some offline analysis of binaries made by by Chipsec and made by um, FWPD under the term uh, host security ID. Um, and I guess those things could, of course, some, some of those checks are uh, online, like runtime checks. Uh, but I'm talking to here about those which can be done only based on binary, based, based on assessment of the binary. And, uh, and of course, we could think about enforcing certain level of security uh, which Chipsec or H HSI advertise. Um, and in that way, we could uh, gain a synergy with the ecosystem. And finally, uh, I think uh, some commercial tools could be integrated here. So I kind of like roughly see situation in which um, in which we can uh, confirm with binarly that our binary that we're flashing is not is, is resistant uh, and is not vulnerable uh, uh, with some I don't know logo fail or I don't know uh, other um, modern uh, uh, vulnerabilities of of uh, UFI firm. And that's that's the vision. And how to get started? You just like cloning. I guess like I should I should give you the uh, Git URI, which is HTTPS here, and we just entering the directory and just like. In, in case of running container, you just run DC, UC, and then you should see something like that. It's just pulling the cont container from GitHub uh, and, and just run the command. And, and you can see it's like uh, it's like a classical um, um, subcommand uh, interface. Uh, right now, there are just two subcommands, SMBIOS and logo. First gives ability to edit uh, SMBIOS data in firmware image, and second gives ability to insert custom logo uh, boot splash. And yeah, I guess this is the same. And if you look at the logo uh, command, the supported format are BMP, PNG, J JPEG, and SVG format. I guess those are converted uh, during the process. Um, and of course, you have to provide the, uh, the shadow ROM file, um, core boot ROM, for example. Um, and the command looks like on the bottom command example, and you should have uh, your new logo there. Uh, then there is SMBIOS modification, and you can see there is UID and serial number modification available, and th there is precise information uh, what format it is and uh, where this information will land. Uh, so UID is in SMBIOS uh, type one structure, and serial is in type one and type two structure. And I guess that's it uh, for uh, the shadow configuration utility. Uh, yeah. So it, are there any questions regarding that tool? I guess we have some time, maybe three minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I knew this is short presentation. I don't have much about it yet. Uh, but I just wanted to introduce people to this tool that it exists uh, and maybe also record the information for for employees and for for users, if they in future would like to use that tool. 
Uh, one remark, uh, it's not Python, it's just pure bash. Ah, so, okay, sorry. I, I just, I look into the repository incorrect, in incorrect way, I guess. Sorry for that. I just thought, I, I thought that the, that the, the, Python, the, the bash is just a wrapper, but if you're saying this is like pure bash, then that's okay. That's great. Yeah, even the GitHub uh, source content indicator shows 100% shell. Yeah, yeah, I see. In the, I see in the languages, well. yes. Yeah, yeah, it, sorry for it that. It is a wrapper to some extent on CBFS tool and others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if we, if, uh, if we uh, compare the contents, then there is also a lot of C there. Yeah, but yeah. This ah, repository okay, yeah, yeah. contains only bash. Okay. Sorry for that. Like I, I can start, I don't know. Like I was, that was blackout. Like I, I should be more careful when looking at the repository. Yeah, I guess not much, not much to say about about this, unless it will grow to something bigger, something more sophisticated, something uh, more feature rich. I would say. Possibly we will integrate SMM store. Uh, tool there, so it will be able to, um, you know, patch the UFI variables in the binary, so one can like flash with some pre-configured setup data and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I think this will be like a natural extension very soon. I guess like a natural oh. question would be about uh, yeah, and Michal, Michal already saying about that the logo fail stuff. Um, uh, no, so, no, not the logo file. Uh, just the our Dashboard system features uh, options in the setup. No, no, I'm uh, saying about uh, the Michal Kopacz who's writing. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry, we have too many. It's Michals. about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. You are not Michal Michek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I here. forgot. <laughs> But anyway, uh, uh, the logo fail discussion definitely would be today, and I would like to have some so, some discussion about that. I wonder if there is if we are, if we are even remotely uh, uh, affected. I, I had no time to dive into that. I regret, but but really had no time to dive to dive into the uh, internals. I, I read some short blog post that this is about libraries. Um, and the question is, if we use those libraries, which are vulnerable. Anyone check that? Like, by the way, if, if, I guess I guess only binarily got working exploit for that, uh, at least for now. Or or, or anyone knows about uh, deep technical explanation, so someone can write exploit yourself themselves. I guess no experts of logo fail today. Yeah, after a short Maybe read about yet. it, it's like mostly boundaries check, buffer overflows checks, and stuff like that. And sanity checks on input parameters. Yeah, blah, but blah, I guess blah, standard question, stuff. But the question is if this is like affecting us. Uh, but I guess like Machi should start. Uh, it's already one midnight mm -hmm. uh, behind the schedule. So Machi, I'll, I'll do the stage and just like yeah, just one thing to to add to to Mihao's comments. Uh, yes, logos are converted offline or or at least checked offline for compatibility, but. Um, yeah, uh, the Tiana core has the BMP uh, decoding library still, so um, there is no saying if this is vulnerable or not. 